home. It's where we celebrate, reflect and come together. Inheriting such a space is a bittersweet moment, a blend of cherished memories and the weight of legacy. And even if it's the last thing on your mind, this transition brings with it certain realities. Among them, the looming question, what about the taxes? Introduce or reintroduce a death tax. The good news here is that you won't have to pay death tax or tax on simply inheriting property. But when it comes time to sell the property, things get a little more complex. Capital gains tax, or CGT, is a hot topic in Australia, especially when it comes to inheriting property. But here's something not everyone knows. There are ways to navigate this. As most people will know, when you sell your home that you treated as your primary residence, you can sell that without paying capital gains tax. It doesn't matter how much the value of the property has gone up, as long as it's been your primary residence the whole time you owned it. That same exemption also transfers onto the next person that might inherit that home. So for example, if you inherit your mom or dad's home and you decide you want to sell it, you have a window of two years after the death to sell it capital gains tax-free. It doesn't matter how you choose to use the property in that two-year window. You can rent it out, you can use it as a holiday home, you can live in it. As long as you sell it within that window, it will be exempt from capital gains tax. If instead, you decide you want to keep the property, you want to convert it into an investment property, for example, or keep it as a holiday house beyond that two-year window, it then starts to attract capital gains. So if the value of the property goes up from the time you inherited it, and you decide to sell the property at some point, like five or 10 years down the track, you're going to be up for capital gains tax on the increase in the value of that property. You'll want to make sure you get your hands on a capital gains valuation so that you're resetting the cost base from the date you inherited to the date you're selling it. And that is something we can help with, by the way. Now, the way capital gains tax works is that the gains gets added to your other income and you'll pay tax at your normal marginal rate. And assuming you've owned the property for more than a year at this point, you only have to add half the gain thanks to the 50% concession. This all obviously only applies if you sell the property you inherited after using it to generate rental income. But if you decide to move into it and make it your own primary residence, then that primary residence exemption just continues on indefinitely whilst that property remains your primary residence. So you won't have to pay capital gains tax when you sell it. It's also probably good to mention that these rules apply regardless of who you inherit it from. It can be your grandma's house, parent's house, auntie's house, brother or sister's house, or even someone not related to you. It doesn't matter who you're inheriting that property from. Now, the rules change slightly if you inherit a house from someone that used it as an investment property or holiday house. In other words, you inherited a property that was not their primary residence. Firstly, you need to know when the deceased first took ownership of their property. If it was before 1985, it's what's termed a pre-CGT asset. This means you inherit that property at the value it was at the date of death of the deceased. So any gain in that property from back in the early 1980s or before will be completely ignored regardless whether you sell it upon inheritance or if you decide to take it over and continue to own it. But any gains you accrue from the date of death onwards will be subject to capital gains tax unless you move into that house and make it your primary residence. Again, a capital gains tax valuation will be helpful here to ensure you're not paying more tax than you need to if you decide to sell it. Now, if the deceased person took ownership of that investment property or holiday house after September 1985, then you will inherit that property with the value at the price the deceased person paid for it. So let's say they bought it for 150K back in 2003. You inherit it at that price. If it's worth 520K now, that gains gets passed on to you. So if you decide to sell it when you inherit it or 10 years down the track, all of those gains right back from when the property was first brought to now becomes applicable to you and you'll have to pay tax accordingly. Again, if you decide to move into that property and make it your primary residence, any gains that you accrue from the date of death onwards whilst it's your primary residence are ignored. But that original ownership period of the deceased person will still be taxable. If we use the previous example, the gains from 2003 to 2023 are taxable, but the gains from 2023 onwards, if it's your primary residence, is ignored. So inheriting an investment property or a holiday home that's not a primary residence is far more complicated than just inheriting a primary residence from someone. It's a whole different ball game. 
My advice? Get some tax advice when you inherit a property and get your hands on that capital gains valuation if you eventually decide to sell. See you next time.